This video details construction procedures used by the Minnesota Department of Transportation, referred to as Type B or partial depth repairs, performed during rehabilitation of concrete pavement. Additional details for the procedures discussed in this section can be found in the plans or are available from MnDOT's Office of Materials. Selection of the appropriate type of repair is detailed in the plans or is made by the engineer. This section includes standards, guidelines, and recommendations on proper construction procedures and materials used to perform partial depth repairs on a concrete pavement rehabilitation project. These repairs follow four major steps. The first step is to define the limits of the deteriorated concrete and perform the removal. The repair area is then prepared by cleaning, forming, installing compression relief, and installing reinforcement as required. The third step is to apply bonding grout to the repair area, place and vibrate the concrete, finish the surface to the proper grade, and apply cure to the surface to retain moisture. The final step is the sawing and sealing of joints and cracks. Now let's go into the details of each of these steps. Step one is the removal of the deteriorated concrete. This is accomplished by accurately marking the removal area Next, remove all concrete in the marked area by milling or sawing and chipping with lightweight removal hammers. The minimum removal depth is two inches. The maximum removal depth is one half the pavement thickness or to the top of the dowels. The repair area is then inspected by hammering to ensure that all deteriorated concrete was removed. Any additional removal area is marked at this time and the deteriorated concrete is removed with lightweight removal hammers. The second step for type B repairs is to prepare the area for the replacement of the concrete. This varies for each type of repair and specific situation and may include installing deformed reinforcing steel, removing unwanted reinforcement and dowels, cleaning the exposed surfaces, restoring any existing joints or cracks, and forming edges of the pavement as required. The exposed concrete surface is then cleaned by sandblasting and air blasting to enhance the bond between the existing pavement and the repair. If the concrete removal on transverse joints exposes any load transfer dowels, any dowels with significant loss of cross-section area or those misaligned must be severed and any exposed dowels must be coated with an approved bond breaker before placing of the concrete. These steps are necessary to prevent the repair from locking the contraction joint and causing additional deterioration of the pavement. If the surface repair area contains any working joints or cracks, they must be re-established by a compression relief insert in the existing crack. If this is not done, the joint or crack will reflect through and damage the repair. These cracks or joints may be re-established by installing compression relief material, such as felt, equal in width to the existing joint or crack, but at least one quarter inch wide. The third step for type B repairs is to place the concrete, finish, and cure the surface. Once the area is prepared and cleaned, bonding grout is applied immediately before placement of the concrete. This grout must be mixed by mechanical means and requires brushing or scrubbing with a stiff bristle broom onto the in-place concrete surface. If the grout is allowed to dry before concrete is placed in the repair, the area must be re-cleaned by sandblasting. Immediately after grouting, the low slump concrete is placed into the repair. Care must be taken to ensure that any inserts, compression relief material, or forms remain in place. Immediately after or during placing of the concrete, a portable internal vibrator must be used to vibrate along the entire repair. This ensures good contact with the existing pavement and eliminates voids in the repair. Do not use the vibrator to move the concrete and do not over vibrate. Over vibration will cause aggregate segregation and drive out in trained air which results in scaling. Once the concrete is placed and vibrated, the surface is brought to the correct grade and slope by striking off excess concrete. The repair is then completed by finishing the surface to the final grade and slope. 
It is critical that all trowel strokes be made toward the edges of the repair to avoid tearing the new concrete away from the existing pavement. After finishing, it is important to edge around any inserts or forms used in the repair. At this time, the surface should be inspected to determine if the finished surface is flush on both sides of the inserts and with adjacent pavement. A straight edge is used to determine if the finished surface is flush with adjacent pavement and will provide a good ride. After the repair has been checked, the surface is textured using a fine textured broom. This brooming is done in the long dimension of the repair. Bonding grout is then applied all around the edges of the repair to seal the edges to the existing pavement. The next step for the repair is to immediately apply cure to all exposed surfaces. This retards the loss of water from the mix, reduces the risk of shrinkage cracks, and is a necessity in order to obtain full strength. The fourth and final step of a type B repair is to saw and seal any joints or cracks. This operation is detailed in an earlier section of this series. This concludes this section on performing type B repairs during concrete rehabilitation. Remember to check with your supervisor, project personnel, and the project plans and specifications concerning any details for this repair.